If your Westinghouse TV has got a black screen, then this video is for you. If you've got no picture but sound on your TV, then the most common cause in about 60% of cases is a blown backlight with a burned out component or loose cable on the T-Con accounting for most of the rest of the causes. You can have a look at this uh, flow sheet to give you an idea um, of what the potential causes are. Um, but there could also be, in a small number of cases, um, a problem with the, the software or with uh, the, the HDMI cables. So I'd recommend going through a few simple fixes first before jumping to replacing your backlights. So the simplest fix, and that works in about 50% of cases, is just to try power cycling your TV. So switch off and unplug your TV, hold down the physical power button for at least 15 seconds, then wait for at least 30 minutes for any residual power to drain from your TV's capacitors, and plug your TV back in and try switching it on again. If you've got a, a, a red light that's blinking or a, light, a power light blinking on the front of your TV, then further power cycles are probably not going to fix this. But if your TV is completely dead and there's no lights at all showing, then just try repeating the power cycle a few more times as, as sometimes it can take a while for it to kick in. You should also just double check before we get into the hardware issues that you don't have a faulty surge protector or smart plug between your TV and wall socket. So remove any surge protectors and just plug your TV directly into your wall socket. You can also try a different wall socket if you're not sure um, whether the wall socket you're using is providing sufficient power. You also just want to make sure that there's no HDMI or um, external connection problems. So just uh, try taking out all of your HDMI cables and all other cables from the back of your TV other than the power cable and then try switching it on and seeing if you're still seeing the black screen or the um, or the sound with no picture problem. If you're still seeing the problem, then, then you know it's not an HDMI issue. If the problem goes away when you unplug all the HDMI cables, um, then just try giving all of the cables and the ports a good clean if, with compressed air if you've got it. And uh, try plugging your device into a, into a different HDMI socket preferably one that's um, on another part of your TV because that should have a separate connection to your TV's main board. If none of that has helped, then you want to have a look for the possibility of a backlight failure. So if you've got sound but there's no picture on your TV, then a backlight failure is the most common cause. So to, to check for backlight failure, uh, switch your TV on so that you can either hear sound or so that you know, the lights on, um, the power light on the front. Then get right up close to your screen and point a flashlight um, or the light on your phone directly at the screen. And you can try changing channels with your remote or going into the menu. And if the, the TV is working, but the backlight has failed, which is given the black screen, then you'll see some very faint images on your TV screen. If you see these faint images, you can be pretty certain that the backlights themselves are the failure point in your TV. Um, but the, the problem with fixing the LEDs is that because they're located in the most difficult to access part of your TV, uh, it can be a bit of a pain to replace them. I would suggest before you just dive into replacing backlights, it's a good idea to, to go and check all the internal boards in your TV first because you will have to remove all of the internal boards to get to the backlight. So uh, it's a good idea just to double check that there's no problems with any of the internal boards first. So moving on to checking your, your TV's internal components. If you don't have any picture when you try the flashlight test on your TV, if you don't have any, if you can't see any faint images at all, um, but if you're still hearing sound or if your just TV doesn't, doesn't seem to be working at all, then the failure is probably with either one of the components on the internal boards or with a cable that connects the boards together within your TV. So there's three main boards inside your TV. There's the time and control board, which is a small board that drives your TV's panel and sends a signal to each pixel row of your screen 
using internal clocks to keep each row in sync. There's the power board, which is where you plug in your power cable um, and it converts your home electricity supply into a voltage and current that your TV can use. And it also powers the backlight, obviously. And there's the main board, which is uh, usually a larger board, which is where you plug in your HDMI and other connectors and um, which does a lot of the logic for your TV. And it also can control the backlight via a connection to the power board. So these boards are all hidden away under the back panel of your TV and either the cable connectors between them can come loose or get covered in grime or dust and that prevents a clean contact or components on the boards can fail, which means that they don't power the backlight sufficiently or it cannot provide a constant picture signal. So the first step is just to make sure that all of the internal cables are tightly seated. So you can just try removing all of the cables one by one after unplugging your TV and, um, and draining the power, waiting for half an hour or so, um, because the, the, the capacitors can hold charge for quite a while and you don't want to give yourself a shock. So just unplug all the cables, um, give all the connectors and the cables themselves a clean, and then just try carefully reseating all of the cables and then powering up your TV and seeing if the problem's still there. Uh, there's some, some steps in the, the linked article below on how to open up your TV um, with the, the LVDS cables connecting the TCON. There's also uh, a catch that you need to, to undo. So um, don't you don't have to pull any of the cables out with force. They should all just come out very easily. If they're not coming out easily, then just look for catches that you can just um, flick down to, to unlock the cable. And just have a look at all the cable connectors, um, the condition of them. Uh, check that there's none that have become damaged. But often simply cleaning and reseating the, the cables can fix um, problems with the, the black screen or with um, uh, no picture but sound. So if you've tried that and... Um, your, t your, your picture is still off then have a look at the power board and try and we need to try and localize where the problem is whether it's with the power board the t-con or the main board so first of all unplug your tv and then with all of the other cables plugged in unplug the single cable that is linking the power board and the main board now, this cable allows the main board to control the backlights and disconnecting it means that the backlights should default to an always on state. So if you now switch your TV on with this one cable disconnected, if the screen is working, then you know the power board is okay and the problem is either on the main board or the TCON. If you still have no picture, then there's most likely a failure of a component on the power board. You can check the individual components on the power board um, with a multimeter if you've got one and um, replace any burned out components or you can just look for a brand new power board. They're about $30 on eBay. Um, there's some more steps on how to troubleshoot these power boards in the, in the linked article below. Um, and this is all supposing that you're not seeing any faint images um, on your TV when you did the flashlight test earlier. If your screen was working when you unplugged the cable between the main board and power board, then we know the problem is either with the main board or the T-Con. So the T-Con is the most likely culprit of most TV screen problems. Um, often one of the internal clocks fails um, and it shows up as artifacts on the screen. But if you've got no picture at all, then actually a main board failure is more common. But to see whether the problem is on the T-Con or the main board, unplug your TV, try totally disconnecting the T-Con, so removing both LVDS cables. And if your backlight now powers up, that means you need to replace the T-Con because that has failed. If your backlight doesn't power up, then you need to replace the main board. But instead, if your backlight is working, but the flashlight test did not show any faint images, but you've got a, a glow on, on your screen so you can tell that the backlight itself is fine and you do have sound coming from your TV. Then just disconnect one of the T-Con cables going to the panel. 
plug your TV back in and switch it on. And if you have a picture on half the screen, then you almost certainly have a TCOM problem. Now you can repeat these steps, swapping over which LVDS cable is connected. If the other half of the screen now has a working picture, then you've got a general failure on the TCON somewhere and you'll need to replace it. If there's no picture with the, the second cable connected, but the first cable disconnected, then you almost certainly have a clock failure on the TCON and you can potentially solve this by using tape to block the uh, LVDS pins on the cable that carries the signal from the failed clock. Um, there's some, some more information on how to do this in the linked article below. If you don't want to do that, then you can just replace the TCON, which will cost around $30. And if you have no picture at all, regardless of which LVDS cable is connected, then you need to uh, double check that the problem is with your TCON or with the main board itself. And if you just want to double check that the main board is the cause of your problem, then you can use a multimeter to check the individual pins on the cable connectors on the main board um, that go to the power board and the TCON. So next to each cable connector, there should be printed on the, on the PCB itself uh, a list showing what each pin does and um, often the expected voltages. So in particular, you want to look for anything that's labeled um, BL or, or BLU or PWM um, for backlight or pulse width, pulse width modulation. So those pins are directly involved in controlling um, the, the backlight. So particularly the cable you're looking at between the main board and the power board. If you've got one that's listed as something like BLERR, so backlight error, and if um, if when you switch your TV on and use a multimeter to check that pin, if it's sending a high voltage, then you know that there's some kind of um, error with the backlight itself. If you've got uh, high voltages on some of the other backlight pins uh, with your TV on, then it's, it's probably a mainboard failure. So to go back to the backlight problem, if your, your BL error pin on your main board is showing a high voltage, or if uh, you had a faint image on screen when you tried the flashlight test earlier on, then you can assume that the backlight is at fault um, and the backlight needs replacing. So assuming that you've checked all the other boards and they're, they're all okay, um, you should now switch off and unplug your TV, remove all of the connections between the boards and remove the boards themselves and then remove the screws around the edge of the TV that hold the bezel. And um, with some care, you should be able to remove the bezel and then remove the LCD panel from the front of your TV. And you should get to the backlights underneath. So in most TVs, they'll be in horizontal strips. You can use a multimeter um, to check the, the individual LEDs themselves. You can also just test them if you've got a couple of bits of wire and a couple of batteries, you can make a little circuit and then um, just try powering up each LED in turn. Just um, put your bits of wire on the on the connectors for the LEDs and see if they light up. If all of the LEDs light up, um, then you should check the connectors between the LED strips. So often the LED strips uh, do not cover the entire width of your TV but there's a few different strips that are connected in series and the uh, the joint, the soldered joint between the strips can fail. Um, there's a link in the article below to, to some more info on that. But you'll probably find that uh, one or more of the LED strips won't light up um, when you test it with a battery or it won't show um, a voltage passing across it when you test it with a multimeter. In that case, you just need to replace the entire LED strip. And it's generally a good idea to replace all the LEDs together because what can happen is if one LED um, burns out through overpowering and then the increased voltage on the other LEDs can cause them to fail. Um, and also if, if one LED is failing, um, because all the LEDs are put in at the same time, then it's 
there's a good chance that some other LED is going to fail in the next few weeks or few months, and you don't want to have to keep repeating this fix. So just replace all of the LED strips. They're about um, 20 or $30 for a, for a new set of LED strips um, off eBay. So just put in your TV's model number, buy some new LED strips, and then you can just disconnect the um, existing ones, um, take them out of your TV and put the new ones in. 